Good morning, brothers. I invite you to turn to 14 in the service folder. We begin in the name of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Sing to the Lord a new song. Praise God in his sanctuary. We sing the hymn printed. God's word from James chapter 4. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone, then, knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers, I have to imagine Paul was riding high, feeling satisfied. I mean, we all know what it feels like to, to have a plan, to execute the plan, and then to see it come to fruition. And, and, and for those of us pastors here, those lay workers here who help in the church, we know how great that especially feels when it's a ministry plan. Paul had a plan. He had traveled to Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe, and there he had preached the gospel. And, and yes, there was persecution. The man who we last heard in a devotion as a murderer of Christians found himself facing murderous threats. But at the end of his first missionary journey, there were churches, Christian churches, where there had been no Christians before. 
Paul must have felt good. And after a, a, a short convention in Jerusalem, can we call it a pastor's conference? And a little bit of respite in Antioch, Paul was going to go out again. And once again, he had a plan. First, he would go back to those cities where God had gathered people together around their Savior. Back to Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. And then, then Paul had a plan to really get the gospel going. No more little villages like those towns. No, now he was going to go to the region of the world that we would call Western Turkey, that the Romans called Asia. To the large cities, Ephesus, Halicarnassus, cities so populous, so powerful, so wealthy, they housed two of the seven ancient wonders of the world. He would go there, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to the major centers, and there would be souls to be saved. There the gospel would spread. It was a good plan. But it wasn't God's. Those of you familiar with Paul's journey know. Somehow, by miracle or other means, God made it clear to Paul that, that his plan for Paul was not to go to Asia. And then when Paul tried to go to Bithynia and Mysia as an alternative, God said no there and wouldn't allow him to enter. And then that famous night in the city of Troas, God appears to Paul and tells him, my plan for you is Macedonia, Greece. And Paul must have wondered what God's plan was. Greece, Greece meant going to cities like Philippi, where apparently there were so few Jews that when Paul did visit, he couldn't find a synagogue, but had to go to the river to find a place to pray. Greece, Greece meant cities like Athens, the very center of Greek philosophical thought, the total polar opposite of Christian selfless faith. Greece meant cities like Corinth. A city so morally bankrupt, even the worst citizens of San Francisco would blush at what happened, not in the bedrooms, but on the streets. Paul must have thought of God's plan. How? I don't know if anyone has noticed yet, but I don't think any of our devotion leaders have commented on the fact that our, our esteemed worship coordinator this year in putting the devotions together tried to match each topic of the devotion with something that the, the preacher or the presenter is known for or gifted in. And, and so Tom, the long-distance runner, Pastor Moldenhauer speaks on God's help and hope for endurance. And Pastor Jurgens, who, who lost a leg, speaks about God's help and hope in times of suffering, our, our missionary in Minot evangelism. I guess that means I'm known as a planner. <laughs> Person ahead likes to put things in order, imagines how things might be and, and works toward that goal, but, but I tell you, that's not really who I am. Maybe I enjoy doing those things, but I'm not half the planner that Paul was. Not because of the plan he put together, but because of the way he carried it out. After God came to Paul and destroyed everything he intended to do, what did Paul do? He didn't stomp his feet. He didn't complain. He didn't insist that God change his plan so he could have his way. He went. He went to Philippi. And Lydia came to faith. And the jailer and his whole family were baptized in one night. And, and he went to Athens. And there in the center of humanistic ideals, Paul preached that our Savior has been raised from the dead for the salvation of all. And he went to Corinth. And in the belly of the beast, God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, working through Paul's words, created a congregation that brings us two letters of Scripture from that Holy Spirit. A congregation gifted. The best plans don't come from the best planners. They come from those who trust that the Lord's plan will be done. We heard the first day of our convention from Pastor Dauk of 102 years of history in our Dakota, Montana district. And we heard how men and women of our district for all of that time created plans and pursued dreams and planted churches and, and in the words of James, saw the good that ought to be done and tried to do it. But if you're listening, you also heard how those plans didn't always turn out the way they wanted. Churches that closed, divisions that arose, 
Not always exactly according to plan, right? And that shouldn't surprise us. We know the truth of what James says here. For all the things that we know and all the things we can anticipate, we don't know anything. We don't even know what tomorrow will bring, much less the next hundred years for our district. We just, we just don't know. James tells us the things that we build, the plans that we make, the things that we construct are, are like a, a vapor in the wind. Like one of those wispy clouds in the Dakota sky that's blown away by the North Dakota breeze. And yet, as we look at what God has done for our district, isn't it a testament to what God can do? Through flawed and fading people making flawed and fatal plans. See how God's will is done. Brothers, my prayer for you is that as you recognize your situation in life, you see God's plan in it. Maybe you're here today as a pastor or a delegate from a church that is not as large or as vibrant as it once was. Maybe you've presided over church services as they closed or consolidated, but I tell you, a church that, that God used for 100, 60, 30, even 10 years is not a failure in God's plan. Because for that time, hearts that were born dead in sin were brought to life in Christ. And, and for that time, God's people had opportunities to serve and live and share their faith. For that time, according to God's plan, the word worked. Maybe you're here from a church that is growing, vibrant, thriving, doing. If you're here from one of those churches, then also listen to James' words here. Don't boast. Recognize the blessing of, of where you are. Speak along with James. If this is the Lord's will, then I will do this or, or that, and whatever it is, rejoice in that. But don't boast in your plan, boast in his. A plan that led to a baby in a manger and a man on a cross. A plan that was proclaimed by angels at an empty tomb. And a plan that is promised to end for each of us in glory with that same man, that same Lord, that Savior. God has been our help in ages past, not just as a district, not just for our congregations, but for every one of us. According to his plan, he is our hope for years to come. For the age that we live in here and the age that will never end. May God bless us according to his plan. Amen. We sing hymn 717.
Day by day, we bless you. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine on us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Good morning again. We uh, thank Pastor Wolf for that devotion, for all of you fellows for the devotions that we've had so far. Appreciate it. Uh, Just a couple of things real quickly. When the pages come around, and I think most have come around already, but they're bringing the committee reports. If you did not ask for a binder, you don't need to take the committee reports when the pages come around. That's just for those who request a binder. So just so that you're aware of that, thank you. And then the other thing is our closing service is going to be in the auditorium where the service was Tuesday night. So after we adjourn here, then we would ask you to simply go to the auditorium for the closing service. But please also take your worship folder with you uh, so that you are prepared to worship. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, We'll begin this morning with a report from Great Plains Lutheran High School. Pastor Mertz, please. You would think that the Housing Committee would know how to turn on a microphone. (laughs) Good morning, everybody. Um, Good to be with you again this morning. And just again, uh, maybe I'll say it at the end again, but it's great to be able to host this. Uh, We're honored and privileged to do that, and we thank you all for taking the time to be here, to come here to participate in this convention. And again, we're happy to do it. And uh, there is a, a document either in the folder or that that you might have in your binder if you receive one of those. And I'd just like to highlight a couple of things. On that uh, report, you can see what our school year theme was, Build on the Rock, that served us well throughout the school year. Under enrollment, you can see that we had 133 students. That's a high water mark for us as a student body, uh, touch over any other year that we've had. And we would ask that you would um, assist us in this way, and that is to keep on encouraging 
encouraging families, encouraging students. And that's not just of incoming uh, freshmen or people in the lower grades, but we receive uh, transfer students regularly. Sometimes there are students that transfer out of Great Plains Lutheran for various reasons, but there are also families and students who are considering this in the course of their high school careers for various different reasons. Please keep sharing the GPL story. Keep sharing the GPL message. That applies to recruitment of those uh, younger students as well. As you can see in that report, at this point we have 29 applications for freshmen for next year, and we're hoping to uh, increase that a little bit so that we can increase our enrollment even a bit for next year. So please take a look at that. As far as uh, finances are concerned, um, you can see the information that is here. God is blessing us along the way. We have an opportunity to finish strong as far as gifts are concerned in this last month of the fiscal year. What I will highlight for you and ask you again to help us with is this. Um, Great Plains Lutheran High School, I believe, is affordable. I think it's a fair statement. You can look at a lot of different high schools and you can see a lot of tuition and fees that are greater than the fees and so forth at GPL. We're blessed to be able to do that because of the support that we receive from a lot of different people and congregations and so forth. That being the case, I still think it is very, very important that you help us share this message that we do not want any student or family not to, and I'm using too many knots here, I know, we don't want them not to consider enrollment or not enroll because of finances. So please help us share this message. If you are a uh, tuition student, if you are a dorm student, even though we are reasonably priced, we're still talking about $10,000. And that's just one year and that's just one student. You multiply that by four years. You multiply that by multiple children in a family. That can be daunting. And I think people can look at that and say, there's no way. There's no way we can even think about this. So please help us share this message. There is a way you can think about this. Because of the support that we receive, because of our student assistance programs, because of people who say, let us know. If there's somebody who can't come because of finances, we want to know. Because we want to help you make it possible. So please help us share that message. On the second side of my report, it mentions at the top there, estate plans. That ties in with some of the words that you heard, some of the encouragement that you heard yesterday. We are being blessed. We're being blessed as people remember ministry in their estate plans as they remember the ministry of Great Plains Lutheran High School in their estate plans. We're blessed through our facilities as you've seen it, as you have experienced over the last couple of days. And we're learning and we're growing. You can even see that in some of the functionality of, of this uh, convention and some of the technology and some of the logistics of worship or, or the meeting space or whatever. But we're blessed to be able to learn to use and utilize these new spaces as best we can. So thank you for helping us to do that and thank you for your patience along the way. In regard to our United in Praise campaign, again, we have been tremendously blessed. This week, we are finalizing our loan. When this building program was proposed and approved, we were approved to borrow up to $2.5 million to make this possible. This week, we'll be finalizing our loan at $1.9 million because of the gifts and support that we have received. That is a tremendous blessing, and we are certainly thank you, thankful for that. So in a way now, we will continue our bridging the gap effort to invite and receive gifts, but rather than reducing the amount of the loan, as that will now be established, any gifts now will help us to shorten the length of time that we're paying on that loan. And of course, every time we shorten that length and pay additional principal, we're gaining uh, by not paying the, the uh, interest that, that would accrue with that as well. So that's uh, a continuing effort, as well as the finishing touches effort that will help us to furnish and equip our auxiliary gymnasium. So again, please help us to convey thanks, not only thanking you here now, but help us to convey that thanks and encouragement to people who are supporting us in that way. You can see information there about our staffing. We are blessed, as uh, Pastor Free mentioned, we were blessed to receive an emergency teacher assignment uh, Kristen Ewer will be joining us this year as a dormitory supervisor and instructor. 
and uh, we have some of our folks who are moving on to different places. Uh, since one of, I think it's just one of them that's here today, just another thank you to Tony for your service to GPL and God's blessings to you as you continue to serve within the district. GPL 25 res registrations, we're at about 240 registered participants in that. That'll be at the end of July. If that might be you and you're thinking about that, please do register for that so that we can plan to uh, have you here with the meal and so forth. And again, if you can maybe help to share this message, if it comes up, uh, I think because of the way something was worded on one of the registration forms, for example, asking your year of graduation if you were a GPL or NLA grad, it may have given some people the impression that this gathering was only for GPL or NLA graduates, and that's not the case. Certainly we're inviting and want everyone who is interested to come and celebrate with us God's grace to us over the last 25 plus years. And uh, I'm sure Tony will appreciate it if I put one more plug in for the GPL Open. It's a fun event. If you enjoy golf, even if you don't enjoy golf all that much, you can come and, and uh, be a part of that day. We certainly appreciate that participation and that support. Again, a lot of other things we could talk about, but to repeat what I said earlier, it's our pleasure, it's our honor to, to host this convention every two years. Um, and we. I would invite your, your response to that. I'll be sending an email to the pastors through the, that group list of if there's anything that you have as far as suggestions, particularly in regard to the housing and, and function of the convention, we, we would welcome that. If you are lay delegates here, uh, teachers, uh, please feel free to share that information and encouragement with us as well. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's my report. Any questions for Pastor Mertz? Pastor Geiger? Pastor, you noted the small amount of money we are borrowing. Could you give a, perhaps a, a broader picture of the entire financial feature of our whole project? Wow, putting me on the spot here. As far as uh, the total breadth of the project, as far as cost is concerned, um, I should have that number in my head more clearly, but basically $6 million in, in round rough numbers, $6 million worth of facilities, and, and we're borrowing uh, a small amount, I guess, $1.9 million. But again, a testimony to the blessings that we have received and continue to receive. So thank you for that. Any other questions? All right. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor Mertz. God's blessings. Albert Meyer, Pastor Albert Meyer texted Pastor Nelson this morning and said his mother is home, uh, doing well. He needs to take care of a little bit of business yet today, so he won't be able to join us this morning for a convention either. But we're thankful that his mother is doing well and is in his home. We'll continue now with our committee reports. Pastor Paul Yonke, Committee B, I believe. Oh, Secretary's, oh, okay, thank you. Mr. Starr. Good morning. Uh, I have Committee B, World Mission slash Joint Missions Council. Uh, subject, Support for World Missions, Reference Report to the 12 Districts, page 63 through 66. Resolution number one. Whereas one, the, world, the Wells Board for Home Missions has announced plans under God's blessing to open 100 new missions in 10 years, and whereas two, the Wells Board for World Missions is currently calling to fill eight additional world, world missionary positions, and whereas three, the Wells Board for World Missions is organizing its work <clears throat> to be ready for a worldwide fellowship that may number half a million people outside of, the, of North America within the decade. And whereas four, there's currently a shortage of pastors and teachers, therefore be it resolved, A, that we encourage the Board for World Missions to continue looking for ways to fill some of these roles with teachers and lay people who may be willing to serve in a gospel outreach post on a different continent, and be, and be it further resolved, B, that we encourage the Board for World Missions, or er, for, sorry, that we encourage the Board for Ministerial Education to intensify its efforts to, to recruit young people 
and those considering a second career to serve in the ministry of the gospel, and be it further resolved to see that we encourage the congregations of the Dakota Montana District to strongly support the worldwide gospel outreach for our synod throughout the congregation or through the congregation mission offerings and through individual gifts and bequests to the synod and be it finally resolved D that we encourage the member, members of the congregations of the Dakota Montana, Di Dakota Montana District to pray for workers for the harvest, to personally speak to young people and those considering a change of careers about the great need for ministers of the gospel and to make a faithful use of their time and abilities to advance the kingdom of our Lord Jesus. Uh, we move for support or adoption. It's been moved and supported to adopt this resolution. Anyone speaking to that? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. It's passed. Continue. All right. Uh, subject, Reverend Dr. Ernst Wenland, retirement. Reference, report to the 12 districts, page 65, resolution number two. Whereas when at the end of the past academic school year, the Reverend Dr. Ernst R. Wenland retired after more than 50 years as a missionary and a seminary teacher in Zambia, and whereas too, Dr. Wenland has faithfully served the Lord and his church as a Bible translator, seminary professor, and pastor, therefore be it resolved, A, that we thank the Lord of the church for the long and productive ministry of Dr. Wenland, and be it further resolved, B, that we thank Dr. Wenland for his faithful service as a missionary and pray for God's blessings on his retirement. Move for adoption. It's been moved and supported that we adopt this resolution. Anyone speaking to that? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. All right. Thank you, that's my report. Yeah. Thank you very much, say young man. No, young man, you always gotta shake my hand. Thank you. Uh, we'll continue with Committee C, Ministerial Education. As you said, ministerial education, uh, those pages are pages 69 to 94 in the report to the 12 districts. Subject, Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary Enrollment, reference, report to the 12 districts, page 71, resolution number one. Whereas, number one, the harvest is plentiful and there will always be a need for more pastors to preach and to teach the gospel to the world, and whereas, two, the enrollment of our seminary is currently on an upward slope However, the enrollment will not cover the need of foreseeable vacancies. Therefore, be it resolved, A, that we as the Dakota Montana District pray to the Lord and ask him to send more workers into the harvest. And be it finally resolved, B, that we as the Dakota Montana District would encourage the Synod to increase efforts to recruit more young men for the pastoral ministry. Mr. Chairman, move adoption. It's been moved and supported. Adopt resolution number one. Anyone speaking to that? Seeing none, all in favor say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. Thank you, it's passed. Continue. Subject, Martin Luther College, thanks for service. Report to the 12 districts, page 79. Resolution number two. Whereas a number of people are reaching ministry milestones or are retiring or concluding their service at Martin Luther College, therefore be it resolved, A, that the Dakota Montana District thank the Lord for these blessings to his church, and be it finally resolved B, that the Dakota Montana District thank all these thanks all these individuals for their time of service. Mr. Chairman, move adoption. It's been moved and supported to adopt resolution number two. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. It passes. Continue. Subject, Martin Luther College Student Financial Aid. Report to the 12 districts, pages 80 through 86. Resolution number three. Whereas, number one, there is a significant shortage of called workers, and whereas, two, the Martin Luther, uh, Martin Luther College has been experiencing declining enrollment over the last several years, and whereas, three, the students of MLC continue to incur a considerable amount of student debt and whereas, four, MLC has laid out a comprehensive plan to receive and administer student aid. 
Therefore, be it resolved, A, that the Dakota Montana District thank MLC for their efforts to make tuition affordable and encourage them to continue to do so. And be it further resolved, B, that the Dakota Montana District encourage the members and congregations of the district to increase their financial support for ministerial education. And be it finally resolved, C, that the Dakota Montana District encourages Wells to increase its operating support for MLC. Mr. Chairman, move adoption. It's been moved and supported that we adopt resolution three. Anyone speaking to that? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Continue. Subject, Martin Luther College equipping Christian witnesses. Report to the 12 districts, pages 85 to 88. Resolution number four. Whereas one, Martin Luther College's Equipping Christian Witnesses campaign will end on June 30th, 2022, and whereas two, the total gifts and pledges received through this campaign total $9,259,771, and whereas three, significant campus upgrades have been made possible by these donations, and whereas four, MLC will begin a new strategic plan Pursuing Excellence Under the Cross on July 1st, 2022. Therefore, be it resolved that the Dakota Montana District thank the Lord for blessing the Equipping Christian Witnesses campaign. And be it further resolved, be that the members and congregations of the Dakota Montana District continue to pray about and support the three pillars of the Equipping Christian Witnesses campaign, recruitment, financial aid, and upgrade facilities. And be it finally resolved, C, that the members and congregations of the Dakota Montana District support Martin Luther College's Pursuing Excellence Under the Cross plan with prayers and offerings. Mr. Chairman, move adoption. It's been moved and supported to adopt resolution number four of the Ministerial Education Report. I see no one asking for the floor. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you, it's passed, continue. Subject, Michigan Lutheran Seminary and Luther Preparatory School. Report to the 12 districts, pages 88 to 94. Resolution number five. Whereas one, there are a significant number of pastor and teacher vacancies, and whereas two, Michigan Lutheran Seminary and Luther Prep provide ministry opportunities for current students like Project Titus and Project Timothy, to encourage young men and women to consider serving in the ministry, and whereas three, both MLS and LPS, host various events with the goal of bringing children on campus to promote ministerial education. Therefore, be it resolved, A, that the Dakota Montana District encourage both MLS and LPS to continue to search for ways to sustain and increase enrollment, and be it further resolved, B, that the Dakota Montana District encourage both MLS and LPS to continue to encourage their current students to consider the vocation of public ministry and be it finally resolved C, MLS and LPS be commended for providing ministerial experiences to high school students and be encouraged to keep looking for similar opportunities. Mr. Chairman, move adoption. It's been moved and supported to adopt this resolution. Anyone speaking to this? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. It's passed. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. that's my report. Thank you. Uh, our next committee is Congregational Services Committee D, Pastor Ray Raywards or Secretary. Looks like the Secretary, Pastor Kenneth Reschke. Subject, report on congregational services. Reference, report to the 12 districts, pages 19 through 24. Report number one. Congregational services consists of six commissions, congregational counseling, discipleship, evangelism, Lutheran schools, special ministries, and worship that give focused attention to specific areas of congregational life. 
Commissions work with district coordinators and utilize congregational counseling reports to identify common needs within Wells parishes and schools. The commissions then provide resources, training, and personal assistance to help meet those needs. Congregational Services is also responsible for analyzing statistical trends within Wells. Congregational Services analyzes the data and shares the relevant information that is needed to make good decisions. Subject report on Congregational Services. Pages, report to the 12 districts, pages 19 and 20, resolution number one. Whereas Wells Congregational Services has on-site programs, namely Self-Assessment and Adjustment, SAA, AXIS, Everyone Outreach, Wells School Accreditation, School Consultations, Early Childhood Consultation, Telling the Next Generation, and Merging for Missions, and whereas, too, many of these services are offered at no cost, therefore be it resolved, A, that we encourage pastors and delegates to make their congregations aware of these resources, and be it finally resolved, B, that we encourage congregations of our district to examine these programs and see if they would be beneficial for their congregation. Move to adoption. It's been moved and supported that we adopt resolution one of committee D. Anyone speaking? See none. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Passes, thank you. From the report of the 12 districts, 20 and 21, resolution number two. Whereas one, Wells Congregational Services has online programs available, namely weekly ministry resources, as in the foundation, worship resources, the Wells Ministerial Growth and Evaluation Process, marriage and family resources, congregational evangelism kits, in season and out of season, and conquerors through Christ, and whereas these are available at wellscongregationalservices.net, and whereas three, many of these services are offered at no cost, Therefore, be it resolved, A, that we encourage pastors and delegates to make their congregations aware of these resources, and be it finally resolved, B, that we encourage congregations of our district to examine these programs and see if they would be beneficial for their congregation. Move for adoption. It's been moved and supported. Anyone speaking to that resolution? Seeing none, all in favor say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. Adopted, continue. From the report of the 12 districts, 21 and 22, resolution number three, whereas Wells Congregational Services has ministry training programs, namely Let's Go, Wells Chaplain Certification, Training for School Leaders, Welcome Home Elder Training, Freedom for the Captives Abuse Prevention Training, and whereas many of these services are offered at no cost, therefore be it resolved, A, that we encourage pastors and delegates to make their congregations aware of these resources, and be it finally resolved, B, that we encourage congregations of our district to examine these programs and see if they would be beneficial for their congregation. Move for adoption. Is this fun? Anyone speaking to that motion? It's been moved and supported. All in favor say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. Thank you, continue. From the report to the 12 districts, 22, resolution number four, Wells Congregational Services Whereas Wells Congregational Services has assistance for special needs, namely military services, prison ministry, mission for the deaf and hard of hearing, mission for the visually impaired, and intellectual and de developmental disabilities ministries, and whereas, two, many of these services are offered at no cost, therefore be it resolved, A, that we encourage pastors and delegates to make their congregations aware of these resources, and be it finally resolved, B, that we encourage congregations of our district to examine these programs and see if they would be beneficial for their congregations. Move for adoption. Moved and supported that we adopt resolution four of Committee D's report. Seeing no one coming to the microphone, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Adopted, thank you. From the, from the report of the 12 districts, page 23, resolution number five, Whereas Wells Congregational Services has assistance for conferences and gatherings, namely United in Christ, Diverse in Service, Here and Now, Want to Be One, and whereas too many of these services are offered at no cost, therefore be it resolved, A, that we encourage pastors and delegates to make their congregations aware of these resources, and be finally resolved, B, that we encourage congregations of our district to examine these programs and see if they would be beneficial for their, for their congregations. Move for adoption. 
moved and supported that we adapt resolution number five, is it? Yes. Okay. Uh, anyone speaking to that motion? All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Adopted. Finally, resolution number six from Report the 12 Districts 23 and 24, whereas one, Congregational Services is working on developing programs, namely Wells National Conference on Lutheran Leadership, Human Sexuality and Identity Task Force, Shadow of the Leader, the Pastor's Role in Shaping Healthy Congregational Culture, School Religious Curriculum Task Force, School Financial Stability Planning, Entertaining Angels, Hospitality Evangelism, Preaching Without Reach in Mind, Wells Marriage Website, Online Small Group Ministry Modules, an Effective Soul Care Partnership with a Focus on Mental Health, and whereas, two, many of these services will be offered at no cost, therefore be it resolved, A, that we encourage pastors in their congregations of our district to pray for those making these resources that their work be fruitful, and be finally resolved, B, that we encourage that once these programs are completed, congregations of our district examine these programs to see if they would be beneficial for their ministries. Move for adoption. It's been moved and supported that we adopt resolution number six. Anyone speaking to that? All in favor, say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. All right. Thank you, that Pastor is my report. Well Thank done. you, Chairman. Well we will have, oh, go ahead. Sorry. As we're sailing through these resolutions, I hope you're paying attention I hope we all are paying attention. I should include myself as well. <laughs> uh, it, it, all of these, we just voted that we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, and if the only thing that happens out of this convention is we say yes and have a lot of pie-in-the-sky ideas about what everyone else should do, nothing's going to happen. Uh, it, it, we just kind of committed to doing these things, so we're going to have to dig out these resolutions off of the convention website, uh, perhaps even print them out. I know that's not supposed to be done again anymore, but print them out, circle the things that we actually need to be doing then. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. We, we don't need to take the time to write up these resolutions if we're not going to do anything besides say yes and pass them. Thank you. Wonderful reminder. Thank you, Pastor Miller. Anyone else? Okay, we will ask uh, Committee F, Mr. Yeager, to please come forward with fiscal services or the secretary of that committee. You're the chairman? Oh. Oh. Sorry, my apologies. Committee F, fiscal, uh, fiscal Services and Subsidiaries, Subject Fiscal Services, report or reference report to the 12 districts, pages 47 through 59. Resolution number one. Whereas one, congregational mission offerings were up 7.1% over the planned CMO and 5% greater than fiscal year 20, 2020. And whereas two, Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary, Martin Luther College, Luther Preparatory School, Michigan Lutheran Seminary, Wells Church Extension Fund, Wells Foundation, Wells Investment Fund, and Northwest Publishing House are either financially stable or strong, and whereas three, all of these entities and schools had their Paycheck Protection Program fully forgiven, and whereas four, NPH received additional income due to the new hymnal and the many resources associated with it, therefore be it resolved a that we thank and praise the Lord for his many blessings, and be it finally resolved, be that we encourage God's people to continue to support the mission of the Synod with generous CMO. Move for adoption. Ooh, that was close. Uh, it's been moved and supported that we adopt resolution number one. Anyone speaking? All in favor say yes. Opposed, same sign. Carried. 
Subject subsidiaries reference report to the 12 districts, pages 95-09, report number one. Wells Historical Institute is celebrating its 40th anniversary and is looking to increase its membership and interest in Wells history. They look to do that with newsletters, presentations, and bus tours. Church Extension Fund continues to offer grants and loans to congregations. CEF has distributed more than $10.5 million to the Board of Home Missions in the past 12 fiscal years. They encourage individual Wells members, congregations, and affiliated organizations to consider investing in CEF. Wells Foundation continues to help God's people support gospel ministry through Wells. As of December 31st, 2021, total assets were $210.7 million with net assets of $79.9 million. Wells Foundation hosted a series of 12, 412 educational webinars and produced other educational videos. There will be more videos to come. Wells Investment Funds provided cost-effective, professionally managed investment portfolios. Investment performance continued to be strong through fiscal year 2021. Calendar year 2022 has started out with significant volatility as a result of historically elevated levels of inflation, supply chain pressures, labor shortages, wage pressures, and increased levels of geopolitical risk due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Synodical Council approved a pension plan freeze as of December 31st, 2021, and the creation of defined contributions to the Shepherd Plan as of January 1st, 2022. Much of the effort of the Retirement Program Commission and Benefits Plan has been dedicated to implementing a smooth transition. Wells Viva Plan rates have remained unchanged for the three plan years for 2020 through 2022, which is significantly lower than national average. Benefit plans will continue its emphasis on maintaining long-term stability for the VIBA, pension, and shepherd plans while considering new ways to engage participants and calling bodies through improved communications. Northwestern Publishing House is positioned to provide long-term sustainable service to the church and fulfillment of the Synod's objective of publishing literature that maintains our Lutheran doctrine and practice. Many resources are on the horizon, including resources for Christian worship, new religion curriculum for schools and churches, prepared to answer series, people, people's Bible devotions, and five-minute Bible study series. That's your report. Thank you very much. Thank you. So it travels home. Uh, Communication Services Committee E, Pastor Tom Moldenhauer, please. Subject communication services, report to the 12 districts, page, pages 16 through 18, resolution number one. Whereas the communication services of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod is responsible for clear and consistent communication of our mission, and whereas two, communication services focuses on providing media that supports Wells' ministry and mission, and whereas three, technology and media are ever increasing in usage and importance, Therefore, be it resolved, A, that we thank Lee Hitter and the Wells Communications Services for the continuing effort to make great content available, such as Forward in Christ, Wells Connection, Together, etc. And be it further resolved, B, that we highlight the value of these materials to the members of our district and encourage their use. And be it finally resolved, C, that we encourage our Wells Communications Services to continue producing useful, regular, and timely content that serves to keep people connected and focused on Wells mission and ministry. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. It's been moved and supported that we adopt resolution number one of committee E's report. Anyone discussing? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Carried. Subject, Wells Synodical Council, 
report to the 12 districts, page 27, resolution number two. Whereas one, the current inflation surge has a direct impact on our called workers, and whereas two, the Synodical Council has modified the planned salary increase from 2.0% to an average of 3.5% for the second year of the biennium. And whereas three, each calling body has the privilege and responsibility to support each called worker so that they may fully give themselves to their ministerial service, therefore be it resolved, that our delegates highlight this increase to the leadership of their calling bodies and use this as an opportunity to discuss the scriptural principles of adequately caring for called workers. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. It's been moved and supported. Anyone discussing? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Carried. Subject synodical council changes report to the 12 district, page 28, resolution number three. Whereas numerous members of the Wells Synodical Council are completing their service, and whereas two, Pastor Paul Yonke from our district is retiring this summer and thus finishing his work as chairman of the board for world missions, therefore be it resolved that we thank Pastor Paul Yonke and these men for their faithful service. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. And we simply all in favor say thank you, Pastor Yonke. Thank you, Pastor Yonke. All opposed say nothing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Pastor Yonke, for your faithful service for many, many years. We appreciate you and your ministry. Thank you. Continue. Subject Wells Christian Aid and Relief, report to the 12 districts, pages 36 to 39, resolution number four. Whereas Wells Christian Aid and Relief offers humanitarian aid when areas suffer emergencies and disasters, and whereas two, the magnitude and impact of these events cannot be predicted or anticipated, and whereas three, Wells Christian Aid and Relief is not synodically funded, therefore be it resolved, A, that we continue to highlight this important work among our people, and be it finally resolved, B, that we encourage the members of our congregations to support this work with generous and cheerful giving. Move it. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. It's been moved and supported that we adopt resolution number four. Very important, especially this time with what's going on in our world. Anyone speaking? All in favor, say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. Carried. Subject, support services technology, report to the 12 districts, pages 40 to 42, resolution number five. Whereas one, Wells Technology strives to utilize ways to maximize our use of technology to help spread the good news of Jesus, such as through ministry media kits, new websites, and synod, data, synod databases, and whereas two Wells Technology works to make secure the data entrusted to them by churches, schools, called workers, volunteers, and donors. Therefore, be it resolved, A, that we thank the Lord for the faithful and tireless efforts of the Wells Technology team, and be it further resolved, B, that we ask the Lord to work through Wells Technology to keep our data secure, and be it finally resolved, C, that we ask the Lord to enable Wells Technology to faithfully utilize both current and future techno technology trends and to continue to develop new resources so that more people receive the gospel message. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. Moved and supported to adopt this resolution as well. Anyone speaking to that motion? Seeing none, all in favor say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Next, we'll have oh, um, an announcement. Thank you. If you haven't already taken care of it, I do have copies of these reports and so forth that you would sign. If you haven't already taken care of it, you can come see me. Thank you. Committee Chairman. Yes, Committee and Chairman. Secretary. That one. Pastor Miller. Just another announcement. Uh, Pastor Dauk failed to mention yesterday, day before, day before, he was here day before, 
uh, that he has compiled an uh, index for his section of the uh, district history uh, that is to be found under essays and presentations folder on the convention uh, folder on the website. Uh, so that's all of the, uh, an index of the names and places for uh, his portion of the district history. Also, uh, unfortunately, two congregations were omitted uh, when the book was printed. Uh, the copy, PDF copies of those histories are also posted in the same folder. Uh, some, the, some copies have had them printed out and, and stuffed in the back. If, yours are, if you don't have two loose leaf, loose leaf pages in the back of your book, please go to that uh, site and download them and print them. And then, may I make a sales pitch to yet? Uh, there's All in favor? So I'm asking you a the sales <laughs> pitch. He'll go ahead, please. There's, uh, uh, it's perhaps getting to be the last chance for you to buy uh, a copy of uh, the Dakota Montana's Centennial History uh, here at convention, low cost of fifteen dollars. However, there are two slightly imperfect copies that remain. They're, the covers are just dinged up a little bit at a reduced price. So if you like a bargain. There's still two copies left at a uh, slightly reduced le uh, slightly reduced price. Otherwise, uh, I can handle the next 86 people that want to buy a book, and that's it. That's all we got left. They're going fast. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Miller. Uh, Mr. Baim, if you would come and do your final election committee report, please. Committee G. Good morning, good to see you. Nice shirt. Good morning, everyone. It has been a privilege to be the election committee chairman this year. It has been a lot of fun. Um, I'll go through our positions. District President is Pastor Free. District First Vice President is Pastor Enderly. District Second Vice President is Pastor Brockmeyer. District Secretary would be Pastor Tomzak. District Mission Board Pastor would be Pastor J. Bicklehop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been practicing for three days. Okay. District Mission Board Amen, Mr. Lee Schull. District Appeals Board Chairman, Pastor Kenneth Brock Brockmeyer. Okay. I do have Kenneth both times. That's what I was looking for. Okay. District Appeals Board Pastor, Pastor Albert Meyer II. District Appeals Board Teacher, Mr. Gene Yeager. District Appeals Board Layman, Mr. Brian Lent. Worship Commission, Pastor Tom Moldenhauer. Discipleship Commission, Pastor Josh Scholes. Nominating Committee, Eastern Conference Layman, Mr. Craig Knudsen. Nominating Committee, Western Conference Pastor, Pastor Gary Jurgens. Nominating Committee, Rocky Mountain Pastor, Pastor Jay Bickelhopt. <laughs> Eastern Conference Chairman, John Weary. Secretary, Keith Peterson. Northern Circuit Pastor, Ken Nelson. Southern Circuit Pastor, Bruce Miller. Western Conference, the Chairman would be Gary Jurgens, Secretary, Bryant Laudy. Hills Circuit Pastor, Jim Schmeling. Owahi Circuit Pastor, D. Thomas Raywerts. Rough Rider Circuit Pastor, Eugene Recker. Rocky Mountain Conference Chairman, Paul Stern. Secretary, Peter Metzger. Northern Lights Circuit Pastor, Jonathan Schultz and Montana Circuit Pastor Paul Stern. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption of my report. It's been moved and supported that we adopt the work of the election committee. All in favor, say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. Thank you, Mr. Bain. Thank you. It was fun. It was fun and you learned how to pronounce a few names. I Good did. for you. And I, I think all the circuit pastors remained the same, except you maybe noticed there was one difference. 
Did you notice the one difference? Yeah, Pastor John Schroeder, who served as circuit pastor of the Hills for I don't know how long, so that's how long it's been. We don't even remember. Uh, is con has concluded his service. He is stepping away, and we thank you, Pastor Schroeder, for your service, and we look forward to the blessing of Pastor Stretch James Schmeling serving. Thank you. And he's also stepping down as conference chairman. So we thank him for that as well. He says it's been eons, but it's not been that long. So thank you, my friend. Thank you. Pastor Ray Wirtz, turn it on. I believe Pastor Recker also stepped down as a circuit pastor after many years of serving us. Did he not? No. He's on the list. Really? Okay. Well, yeah, he's then I, there. I, I need to read. Never <laughs> mind. Read or listen, one of the two. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> All right, Committee H, uh, COP District President's Report, Pastor Paul Stern. Thank you. Subject is statistics and congregational mission offering subscriptions. R3TD, page three, resolution one. Congregation, whereas the congregational mission offerings provide the primary financial support for the work of our synod, and whereas two, the Wells congregation submitted the highest level of congregational mission offerings in our synod's history, therefore be it resolved, A, that we express our thanks to the Lord of the church for generously providing the means and the motivation for his people to support our Synod's mission and ministry so generously. And be it finally resolved, B, that we encourage the congregations of the Dakota Montana District to continue to give generously to the work of our Synod. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. It's been moved and supported that we adopt Resolution 1 from Committee H. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Passed. Carried. Subject is child abuse protection policies, R3TD, page 4, resolution 2. Whereas, one, our Lord Jesus welcomed the little children and blessed them, and whereas, two, we are called to be a reflection of God's love to those in our care and to take our responsibility to them seriously, and whereas, the church has the obligation to provide a secure environment for children participating in church programs. And whereas for, we are also concerned about the safety and reputation of the adults and teens whose talents make these ministries possible. And whereas five, the credibility of the church's ministry in the name of Christ are at stake, therefore be it resolved, A, that we encourage the Conference of Presidents to continue to inform the congregations of the Synod of the importance of this issue and be it further resolved, B, that we encourage the Conference of Presidents to continue to provide resources to protect the children in our care. And be it finally resolved, C, that we encourage congregations of the Dakota Montana District to utilize the resources that have been made available. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. It's been moved and supported that we adopt resolution number two from Committee H. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. Carried. Next, subject to uh, departing called workers, official acts, pages two and three, resolution three. Whereas Reverend Timothy Berg accepted a call to serve in the Minnesota district, and whereas two, Reverend Gary Bodie accepted a call to serve in the Minnesota district, and whereas three, Reverend David Betcher accepted a call to serve in the Nebraska district, and whereas four, Justin Dauk accepted a call to serve in the Nebraska district, and whereas five, Mr. Steve Gurgle accepted a call to serve in the Minnesota district, and whereas six, Mr. Philip Miller accepted a call to serve in the northern Wisconsin district, and whereas seven, Mr. Tim Schubcable uh, accepted a call to serve in the southeastern Wisconsin district, and whereas eight, Reverend Wyoming 
Ryan Wolf accepted a call to serve in the Minnesota district, and whereas nine, Reverend Andy Krause retired in 2021, and whereas 10, Reverend Paul Yankee announced his retirement in 2022, therefore be it resolved that we express our thanks to the Lord and to these men for their faithful service to God's people in the Dakota, Montana district. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. It's been moved and supported. Anyone wishing to speak to that motion? Pastor Peterson? Not to the motion. Right. Turn on the microphone, yeah. please. Not to the motion, but if I could, I see two report H's. I believe I understand that they had a, the, the, a resolution on new members earlier, and that was resolution one. It looks to me, if I understand this, we have two resolutions, one by this committee. Okay. So the first one we had should be two, three, we'll just, four. We'll note that and move them all down. to each of these, I believe. Yep. We'll make the correction. Thank you for being observant. It's been moved and supported that we give thanks to the Lord and to these men for their faithful service to God's people in the Dakota, Montana district. All in favor say amen and amen. Would anyone even possibly dare to oppose that? Carried. Thank you. Subject to hymnal committee completes its work. Uh, R3TD, page 3, resolution 5. Whereas the Wells Hymnal Committee presented the completed new hymnal after a decade of faithful work, therefore be it resolved that we express our thanks to the committee for their faithful work, which is a blessing to the church. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. It's been moved and whoops. It's been moved and supported that we adopt this resolution. Anyone speaking to that motion? I know Pastor Schutz was on the committee for a while. How, how many years was that hymnal in the making? I was just on the first three years. And how long ago was that? The first three years. Eons, he, eons ago. <laughs> it took eons to make the new hymnal. The Psalter took eight years. So truly a, a, a tremendous work. All in fa anyone dis wishing to speak to that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Thank you and your committee for your work. You bet. Two more. We'll have uh, Pastor Schrader, Schroeder, excuse me, come forward and he will give the excuse committee report. Mr. Chairman, Excuse Committee L, subject full-time excuses, resolution number one. Whereas full-time excuses have been requested from the delegates from Bethlehem, Raymond, South Dakota, Shepherd of the Hills, Custer, Peace, Millbank, St. John, Summit, Christ, Bison, Peace, Isabel, St. John, Baldel, Trinity, Sturgis, Hope, Spearfish, St. Paul, McIntosh, Grace, Hot Springs, Trinity, Aberdeen, Prince of Peace, Yankton, Christ Morristown, St. Paul, Roscoe, Christ Star King, Lewistown, Montana, Trinity Terry, Salem Circle, Faith Melstone, Apostles Billing, Val Valley View, Helena, St. John Carson, North Dakota, or Saviors Bismarck, Zion Zealand, Shepherd of the Valley, West Fargo, St. John's Paradise, St. John's Tappan, Christ our, our Redeemer, Gillette, Wyoming, St. Peter, St. Albert, Alberta, Canada, Mountain View, Calgary, Alberta, St. Paul, Calgary, Alberta, and from <coughs> the Reverends Jonathan Schultz, Benjamin Radke, Jeff Sontag, Gary Bodie, Albert Meyer, Lloyd Lemke, and from the teachers Alex Hunt, Gene Yeager, and Jeff Roloff, Therefore, be it resolved that the full-time excuses be granted to the above said persons. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. It's 
been moved and supported that uh, we adopt these full-time excuses. We have a number of people coming to the microphone. Uh, please identify yourself and push, turn it on. Oh, it was on, sorry. Pastor Nathan Laska, serving Daniel Elgin, Trinity Carson, St. John's Place. Um, that is the, just slight correction. Um, Trinity Carson, not St. John's Carson. So with, noted. With, with St. John's Paradise listed. Pastor Schmeling, uh, my delegate from St. Paul McIntosh would be insulted if he saw that he was fully excused. So he was here. St. Paul McIntosh. Thank you for informing us. Pastor Jeff Sontag, serving God's people in Shawnee Mountains in Bozeman. Um, I missed the morning for sickness yesterday, but I should, I believe, I don't believe I'm fully excused since I'm here right now, so um, I believe I should be moved to part-time excuses. I'm on there for fully excused, so thank you. We'll take that one under consideration. <laughs> I appreciate that. On behalf of the fine gentleman from Peace and Millbank, he's been here the whole time as well. The delegate. Uh, He's well, been listed as having a full-time excuse, but uh, if you want to just scratch that one off, Peace sure. Mill Bank has been here. Thank you. So are, is the body okay with having those verbal corrections and not sending him back to reprint it all and bring it back? Are you okay with that verbal correction? And trusting this young man to get it done properly. If you are, all in favor say yes. yes. Opposed, same sign. Continue, carried. Subject part-time excuses resolution number two, whereas part-time excuses have been requested from the delegates of, from St. John Summit, South Dakota, mm -hmm. our saviors, South Shore, Mountain View, Great Falls, Montana, and from the Reverend John Joshua Schultz, and Mr. Jonathan Niemi, and uh, therefore be it further resolved that part-time excuses be granted to the above said persons. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. It's been moved and supported to uh, grant these part-time excuses. Anyone speaking to that? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Carried. Subject, unexcused absences, resolution number three, whereas no communication was received regarding uh, the delegate from Trinity Hendricks, Minnesota, therefore be it resolved that no excuse be granted for the above said person. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. Uh, we don't have any one. What's that? We don't have a second to that motion, so I don't think we can speak to it yet. It's been supported. I didn't uh, ask to be, I recognized that. Say what? Uh, it's been moved and supported that we adopt resolution three. Anyone speaking to that motion? Pastor Miller. Uh, Bruce Miller, who happens to serve Trinity and Hendricks. Uh, the, the spirit of the resolution is, is accurate, all, although I did tell them that they didn't send, the, that, that no one came. I kind of wonder if a number of the people that were actually granted excuses, uh, just because they, is an excuse, oh, we didn't find anybody. That doesn't count as a, an excuse for not having a delegate here in my book, uh, which is why I want my congregation singled out as really not, not doing what they're really asked and required to do by the, the district's constitution, to send a delegate, at least make a attempt, pick somebody. They didn't even, couldn't find anybody to pick. No, nobody volunteered, and so they didn't put the finger on anybody to do it either. Uh, I, I think there's probably a number of congregations that we gave excuses to that probably fall under the same category. But if Trinity is the only one that gets an unexcused, I'm fine with that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. Yep. Uh, all in favor of not excusing Trinity Hendricks, Minnesota, say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. 
Thank you. For Thank you. Form. God bless you. Uh, and, and what Bruce and Pastor Miller said does underscore a, a very important part. The constitution of our district does state that all pastors, all, all members of the district, which would include all pastors, all male teachers, and a male lay delegate from every congregation are to attend. And so it just, we know what the dates are in two years, so let's try to watch our vacation planning and let's start talking to our congregations and encourage, strongly encourage participation from our lay delegates as well. I, I suppose one would have to readily admit this maybe isn't sitting through these resolutions isn't maybe the most exciting part of your day, but it is the work that God has called us to do, and so we do it, regardless if it's exciting or not, and we do it joyfully and with thanksgiving. So thank all of you for being here and taking your time to serve in this way. I believe, then, we just have one more committee report, and that would be Committee I, Resolution and Steering. Pastor Enderly, please. Subject, thanks, this is committee I, resolution number one. Whereas this 51st biennial convention of the Dakota, Montana District of the Wells has been faithfully and diligently served by individuals and groups, therefore be it resolved A, that we thank Reverend David Mertz, Mr. Matt Bauer, Mr. Eric Martins, Mr. Ryan Rosenthal, the housing committee, for making necessary arrangements for various components of our convention including our audiovisual needs, and be it further resolved B, that we thank Reverend Mike Enderly, preacher, Reverend David Mertz, and Reverend Doug Free, liturgists, Reverend Tom Moldenhauer for putting together this service, and Reverend Noel Willits and Reverend Chester Reineman, cantors, Mrs. Deanna Martins, organ and piano, and the following instrumentalists, Mrs. Krista Knoss, Mr. Eric Martins, Miss Emily Moritz, Reverend John Schwartz, Reverend Nate Walther, Mr. Jonathan Nemi, also director, Reverend Gerhard Jurgens, Reverend Tom Raywertz, Reverend Mark Schutz, Reverend Bryant Laudy, and Reverend Tom Oldenhauer for serving at the opening service. And be it further resolved C, that we thank the staff of Great Plains who provided the fine meals and facilitated the convention. And be it further resolved D, that we thank Great Plains Lutheran High School for the use of their facilities, including the new cafeteria and auditorium and be it further resolved E, that we thank Reverend Mark Schutz for all of his work to help with technology so that we could see videos and other presentations, and be it further resolved F, that we thank Reverend Tom Moldenhauer, Reverend Gerhard Jurgens, Reverend Nathan Laska, Reverend Nate Walther, Reverend Wayne Wolf, and Reverend Eugene Recker for conducting devotions at our conventions, and Mr. Matt Westlow, Mrs. Ellen Heisner, Mrs. Cindy Hansen, Mr. Sam Klenke, Ms. Dee Dee Rosenthal, and instrumentalist Sebastian and Darren Rosenthal, and Mr. Matt Bauer for playing the organ and keyboard for these devotions. And be it further resolved, G, that we thank Reverend Justin Dauk for his convention essay on Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations, stories from the first 100 years of the Dakota, Montana district, and Reverend Jonathan Weary for his convention essay on a look ahead continuing the Great Commission in a COVID-affected world. And be it further resolved, H, that we thank Reverend Bruce Miller, Reverend Justin Dauk, and others they enlisted for their work to produce and publish a centennial history, the Dakota Montana District 1920 through 2020. And be it further resolved, I, that we thank Reverend Bruce Miller for designing the seal for our centennial celebration and for also getting banners made to be used for our celebration and be it further resolved, J, that we thank the pages for the efficient and helpful manner in which this convention's work was aided, and be it further resolved, K, that we thank Reverend Ryan Wolf for serving as Secretary Pro Tem on Wednesday, June 15th, and be it finally resolved, L, that we express our appreciation to the officers, standing boards, and committees who have served their Lord faithful and efficiently in the Dakota, Montana district during the past biennium. 
Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. Been moved and supported to adopt this resolution from the steering committee. Anyone speaking to this motion? If not, all in favor say thank you. Thank you. Opposed, same sign. Carried. I think that brings us to the end of our business at this convention. Thank you. One of the things that is said about the Dakota, Montana district is just the camaraderie, the getting together. Uh, I don't like to talk about myself or my family, but we are blessed with four boys, two are pastors in that state, Wisconsin, and they have these district conventions. You know what they do at night? They go home. You know what we do at night? We stay together. We visit, we play cards, we laugh, we have fun. And that's one of the coolest things about this district, is just the camaraderie, the togetherness, the fellowship, the joy. They think they drive a long way when they go three hours. We know what that is in our district. That's next door. So thank you to you who flew in from Canada, to you who drove in from Missoula, to you who came from St. Martin's. Thank you for your service, for your time, for your effort. And God bless every one of you. We pray that God carry you home safely and that he continue to bless you and your ministries in whatever shape that may be. We do have one more motion. It wasn't made. <laughs> it's been moved that we adjourn. It's been supported that we adjourn. I'm going to call it. All in favor, say yes. Anyone opposed? Carried. Thank you. Please, Pastor Mertz. Thank you. I have a, <clears throat> a few announcements and reminders. Please return your